Hi, I'm Dana Brown, Zojo's Director of Marketing. In this tutorial, we're going to see how we can create our own version of the Mash the Mole game that you'll be able to run on Mac, Windows, and Linux. The game mechanisms are very simple. It's composed of a static scenario displayed on the main window, one instance of the mole character, and a class working as the controller for all the logic of the, logic of the game. It's in charge of updating the score, selecting a new position for the mole character, and it's also responsible for reacting to everything in the game. The main item in this game is the one represented by a new class that is based on a canvas control, as you can see in the inspector. And that will be in charge of animating the mole character, going out from the hole, and going back in again. It's also important to set the background image for the game, and set the limits where the mole can show up from the ground. That is something we're going to set giving the controller the coordinates, width, and height of the area using an instance of the rect class. Back to the mole class, you can see that we added a series of image files that we'll use to create the animation of the character. All of these are PNG files with a fixed size of 128 by 128 pixels, and where every one of the animation frames is named in the same way, where just the last character varies from 1 to 4 and A to D. We're going to use every one of these with the help of a timer to create the animation of the character itself. And to make things more fun, we'll be in charge of changing the firing period to the timer so the animation will be slow during the first levels of the game and increasing in speed as you advance to higher levels. If we're fast enough to hit the mole when it is displaying the last frame of the animation, then the image will be changed so our character displays the corresponding picture. Another interesting item in the game is the background picture itself. As you can see, it has a size of 640 by 640 pixels that matches the fixed size of the window in our app. The name of the window object is Mole Window, and we used Mole Mash as its title. As you can see here, the only objects we put in the window is the one instance of the background canvas setting its position and size to the one for the window. We will lock it to the window and close the four locks under the locking section of the inspector panel. Once we set the background, let's go back to the most interesting item in the project, our mole. It needs to know about its own state all the time. That is, if it has been hit or changing the frame for the animation. All these states are controlled through the class properties. For example, here you can see how animator is a property of timer data time being the one in charge of the character's animation. Increment is an integer property whose only accepted values will be 1 and negative 1. This is a helper in the frame or picture to be shown when the mole is going out from the floor or when the mole is going to hide itself. To store all the animation frames, we have the mole sequence property, where you can see that it is an array of the picture data type. The mole smashed property is a boolean that will let us know if the character has been hit by the player at the right frame sequence, or if it did when the animation was displaying a different frame. The speed integer property will be in charge of storing the current speed value for the animation. And target is a property in charge of referencing a delegate value. So we can notify it every time the player clicks on our character. As you can see, the data type for this property is mole delegate, which is a data type defined in the class that will store the memory address of a method or function, where such method needs to conform to the signature defined by the delegate. That is any method receiving a mole status as a parameter. 
So what is the mole status data type? As you can see, it is an enumeration declaring a series of valid values. It's a good way to control it so any method will receive only known values and no others. Using the enumeration editor, we declare two possible values, hidden and failed. Matching the two possible options where the player clicked on the right animation frame or not. The last property to review is smashed. This one will be in charge of storing the picture we want to display when the user clicks on the mole at the right animation timing. That means the property will store the reference to this picture. So how do we initialize, initialize our class with proper values for these properties? That's something that we're going to do in our constructor method. Because this is the method that's executed first when we create a new instance. As you can see, the first thing we do is add the pictures for the animation sequence to our mole sequence array. Then we assign the mole smash picture to the smashed property. And next we initialize our animated property with a new timer instance setting its period property to the value stored in the speed property, and setting the object itself as the receiver of the notification every time the timer reaches the lapse of time set as the period. So how can we set the object as a receiver for these notifications? Well, if you examine the interfaces section for the mole class, then you can see that we added the action notification receiver interface. So we just need to implement the expected methods declared by that interface, the perform action method. Here we just need to call the invalidate method on itself in order to fire the paint event on the object to draw the next frame for the animation. So this is how we create the animation for our character. If we return to the constructor method, the last thing we do is activate the timer and set the run mode so it will fire the action event multiple times instead of just once. So we already know that the paint is the event in charge of animating our character, and because our class is based on canvas, we receive the G parameter with a graphics context we can use to draw on it. The first thing we do here is check if the mole smashed is set to false, which means that the player didn't hit the mole. So we proceed drawing the next frame in the animation. We retrieve the next frame from the array at the index stored in the offset property, and we simply drag that picture in the graphic context of the object. Then we increase the offset value using the frame stored in the increment property, and that can be one or a negative one. Next, we check if the offset is greater than the last row index, and if it is, we change the sign to the increment property value, assigning the last index value to the offset value. If, on the contrary, the offset reaches the negative one value, then we'll change the sign again for the increment property, setting zero as the offset value, so the animation will be reset again. Finally, if the player clicked on the mole at the right frame, then we'll draw the smash picture on the graphic context. That's all for the animation. Now we need to react when the player clicks on the mole, something we can do by implementing the mouse down event. The first thing we will do here is check if the offset is pointing to the last frame of the animation, which means the player clicked on the mole at the right time. So we disable the animator timer and set the mole smash, pro smash property to true, calling the invalidate method again to update the picture displayed and deferring the call to the mole crushed method by one second, passing along the mole status, hidden value as parameter. If the player clicked on the mole at the wrong time, then we just need to call the same method in a deferred way, passing along the mole status failed value. If we examine the mole crushed method, we can see that we reset the mole smashed property to the by default false value, calling next the method stored as the delegate in the target property. Think about it as a mechanism to notify any interested object about the fact that the mole has been clicked by the player. 
Of course, we need to check first that this property is storing a valid object instead of pointing to nil, which means no object or no value. So to summarize, these are the main methods and properties making our mole character work. The last method is that we still have not reviewed is the one in charge of resetting the state of the object to some initial values again. That is setting the increment property to one and the initial frame of the animation at the index zero of the array. Then starting the animator timer in charge of animating the mole and calling the invalidate method to update the character drawing. Let's keep the target property in mind because like the speed property, both are calculated properties. The main difference between calculated properties and the regular ones is that the calculated property includes a getter and a setter method that you can use in order to do additional checks, changes, or reactions in a different way depending on the received value. So for example, if we explore the setter for the speed property, we have a way to set the minimum speed to 300 in case the received one is less than 50. And then we'll use the value as the new period for our animator timer. That is decreasing or increasing the speed of the animation from the for the mole object. In the case of the target setter, we directly assign it from the received value, but our mole class that we added as a new instance to the window is not aware of the game rules. It is simply an object aware of just itself. So we need another class acting as the controller for the game, which will be the one that's in charge of the real game mechanics. That is the game coordinator class. As you can see here, the game coordinator class is more simple compared with the mole class. In this case, the game coordinator class defines a series of properties like the playable area or the mole item used to track the character. So it can assign a new position inside the playable area if every time the player hits an instance and also can reset the character to its by default values. While the game area property will be in charge of storing the playable area values to display every mole character. In addition to these two properties, we also have the score target property. This is a reference to a label control used to display the current game score and the score value property itself where the game controller will store the current game score. As methods for the class, we can find the start method, receiving uh, as parameters all the needed values to start the game, like a mole instance and also the rect parameter that defines the playable area, and the label control that will display the score value. So we only need to set these parameters to the class properties and also set the address of the score method as the target for the mole instance. And then it calls the reset game method to start the ball rolling. If we inspect the reset game method, it takes the width and height of the mole instance, and then it creates a new random class instance. So it can be used to get the new X and Y coordinates to, a position, to position the mole inside the playable area. Once the top and left properties are set for the mole, it calls the reset method on the mole instance and also sets its visibility to true. The last method under the game coordinator class is score. This is the delegated method being called by the mole every time the player clicks on it. The first thing we do is check the received mole status value and see if it is a valid hit. Then we proceed to making the mole invisible, increasing the score by 10, and also increasing the animation speed in the mole by uh, every 100 points. Next, we call the reset game method to get a new mole position on the screen. If it is an invalid hit value, then we simply decrease the score by 10. Now that we know the inners of how the game works, we can run the project and play with it to see how these two classes fit together. As you can see, our mole knows how to animate itself.
And if we click on it at the right time, we can see how the mole picture changes and the score is increased by 10, setting also a new position for the mole character to show up inside the playable area of the window. As you can see, we achieved two things. The mole only needs to know how it has to behave, while the game coordinator doesn't need to know how the mole works. And because of this separation, it makes it easier to change one class without impacting how the other one works. From this point on, you can go further and evolve the game as we did here. As you can see, in a more evolved version of the game, the controller also puts more moles on the screen, it adds background music, and even every mole displays the number of times it has been hit so the controller can take that into consideration to decrease the score or adding new mole instances to the playable area. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and you can find the project file among the example projects provided with the Zojo download. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and keep informed about the latest Zojo news in our blog and of course visit us on the forums.